Raiders. Greatest victory. <laughs> Oh, oh, sir. Oh, sir. Your beautiful uniform. Oh, that's, that's all right. I, accidents will happen. Don't, don't worry. Just, just, just quite forget it. Forget it, my boy. Forget it. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're not mad, sir? You mean I don't even have to grovel? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. I, I like you, son. You're bright and you have a chuckly sense of humor. Oh, well, 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 as uh, father to son, sir, are you really sure that you're all right? All right? I've never felt better in my life. I feel like Nelson at Trafalgar, Dewey at Manila, Custer at the Little Bighorn. <laughs> he, he was Army, sir, and I believe they blew that one. <laughs> well, uh, doubtless due to poor planning. That is the secret of any military operation, Beasley. Planning. Oh, don't tell me, sir. There is that gloating gleam in those hot little eyes. <laughs> you have finally sunk the waves. <laughs> oh, no. Just a... Uh, just something to make life with Mother Morgan a bit more bearable. Do you recall that freighter on its way to Australia? Oh, oh, the, the one that piled up on the reef off Ranakai? Loaded with goodies for our friends and allies. Oh, tell me, sir, don't keep me in suspense. Yes, what did you steal this time? Well... Lieutenant Margaret reporting Operation Big Sneak successfully completed, sir. Big Sneak? Code name. The top secret vehicle deployed in a sign staging area and secured at 1700 as per sealed orders. Oh, I can't stand that baby talk. <laughs> the staff car you scrounge is stashed in the motor pool. Well, that, that's a casualty of war. Flotsam of the sea. Uh, yes, sir, and I'll have the serial numbers filed off. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Beasley, you must remind me to have a picture of Lieutenant Morgan hung up right alongside of my wife's. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, uh, Commander, uh, Dad, uh, uh, can I go look at your new staff car? Uh, I've never seen a flotsam. <laughs> go, Beasley, just go. with a rose body. <laughs> Hi, sailor. Stanley. You're expecting Dr. Livingston, I presume. Oh, Stanley, I'm sorry. I forgot our date. I, I mean, I didn't forget. I was busy. With who? Well, I can't tell you, Stanley. It was a secret mission. I bet he was stronger than me and taller than me and every bit as handsome. Who? Who, who, who? Your secret passion, that's who. Mission, not passion. <laughs> Stanley, your chin is quivering. I waited two whole hours for you, and then I began to worry. Maybe something happened to her, I thought. Maybe they're keeping it from you, I thought. But nothing happened. And they were keeping it from me. Molly, Roberta, even Botnick, they all clammed up on Adrian me. Adrian swore them to secrecy. Well, I got a big secret for old Moby Dick. I am a man scorned. I know what I'll do. I'll put in for combat duty with the Foreign Legion Navy. You can't do that, not on account of me. One must expect casualties in love and war. If Adrian loses his chef, he'll kill me. <laughs> Stanley, baby, I didn't mean to stand you up. I was on the secret mission. Don't even look at me. The light that lies in a woman's eyes and lies and lies and lies. All right, if you won't take my word, there's no other guy. I'll just have to prove it. Come on. Yeah, you're right. This is the only solution. What is? I'll fight to the finish. <laughs> Somebody's been in here. Where is he? I'll, I'll crack. 
cream him. I don't care how big and rugged he is. I may be small, but I'm wiry. <laughs> but I am small. <laughs> okay? Come out, you jungle jiggle Knock it off, tiny Tarzan. I tell you, there's no other guy. <laughs> Stanley, I'm sorry I missed our date, but there'll be another time. Well, there's still time to drive up to the Blops and look at the safe. Gee, Stanley, that sounds wonderful. I'd love to go, but uh, uh, there isn't a Jeep available. Jeep, Schmeet, we can use old Ranakai Fats' hearse. Hearse? That happens to be a genuine 12-cylinder town car. Big deal. What is it, a rich man's hot rod? I bet it don't even go over 120. <laughs> well, what is it going to be? Shall we go for a drive, or shall I ship out? Well, okay, but just up and back and I'm driving. Good, that means you can't tell me to keep both hands on the wheel. <laughs> So when I joined the Navy, I never thought I was going to end up a pirate. I just hope he earns us a few points with Captain Kidd. What ship is he on? <laughs> you know, we'll be lucky if Adrian even lets us drive his fancy staff job. Oh, who cares? He's not the only one in the world with a town car. That's right, lovey. The Aga Khan has one. King Farouk. A lot of people we don't know. <laughs> Selma's boyfriend has one. You mean Stanley? Sure he does. And he even lets Selma drive it. Boy, he must be the greatest chef in the whole world for Commander Adrian to let him bring his own car to the war. Wait, wait, uh, wait a minute, lovey. What did you just say? Gee, I don't know, Lieutenant. I wasn't really listening. You saw Selma and Stanley driving Adrian's new staff car? Where did they go? I don't know. I had my own date. A leaky dingy. Oh, the idiotic, crazy... What if Adrian finds out? If we just knew where to look for him. Oh, that's easy. Just look in the back seat. You know what you do? You turn a man's blood to water, luscious lips. Kiss me. I'm on fire. So bleed a little and put the fire out. It's like I'm your Gauguin. I'd even cut off my ear for you, except I need them both to hold up my glasses. Stanley, cut it out. Be yourself. Better yet, be somebody less grabby. So that's it. You're saving your kisses for that other man, the guy you stood me up for. Now, don't start that jazz again. Let's try the flip side. Who is he, Thelma? I demand to know the fink name, rank, and serial number. <laughs> Well, you don't have to get all choked up about it. You, you woman, you, playing hanky-panky with my emotions, and all the time he was looking over my shoulder. No, no, that's all right. Go to him. Go to your other lover. This island ain't big enough for the both of us. Wouldn't you know? I finally find a guy who digs me, and he's stir-crazy from old movies. <laughs> I'm sure have high running boards. <laughs> Adrian's new staff car. How could you do it? What if something had happened? 
scratch one wave experiment. As it was, everything's all right. Oh! <laughs> Walski, you, you didn't scratch it, did you? No! Oh. Bend defender? Oh. Get a headlight? Now tell me, what was the damage? The car. <laughs> the whole car? Well, not exactly. Some of it caught in a tree. <laughs> Where it went over the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come in, come in, come in. Commander Adrian? Lieutenant Morgan. Unless the Japanese wish to surrender to me personally tonight, I see no reason why I should be deprived of a few stolen moments from the hurly-burly of battle. Sir, is it or is it not true that regulations forbid the use of naval equipment without authorization? Oh, I suppose so. Then I must say, taking your new staff car without signing was just not Navy. <laughs> My beautiful new town, Landau. Gone, illegally removed. Now, I realize that rank has its privileges, but, sir, it does set a bad example for the others. Now, Lieutenant Morgan... And I, I do think that you should put yourself on report. Lieutenant Morgan, I did not take my staff car. Oh, well, in that case, sir, I apologize. But I do feel that you should reprimand Ensign Beasley. <laughs> I told him he could look at it. <laughs> okay, now play a cool bees. You're home free. Scuttle the waves, and you've got old dad in your pocket. <laughs> the car, sir. Gone, sir. The waves, sir. No doubt about it. <laughs> sir, it's my duty. Sir, it's my duty. It's my duty, Jerry. Please, please sir. stop babbling. What have you done with my staff car? <laughs> the car, sir. Gone, sir. The wave, sir. No doubt about it. He's still unconscious. How can you tell? A clear-cut case of dereliction. Sir, when I got to the motor pool, there wasn't a single wave on duty. No problem. <laughs> Lieutenant, didn't I give you strict orders to guard my car night and day? No, sir, you did not. Oh, passing the buck, eh? <laughs> Why didn't you do it anyway? Where's your initiative? Sir, the way I see it, Ensign Beasley was the last one to see it. <gasps> the car, I mean. That is character assassination. <laughs> sir, be fair. I mean, would a gutless wonder such as myself even dare to lay a hand on the fender? <laughs> He's right. The gold stripe on his shoulder is matched only by the one down his back. Well, sir, it's a, a small island, and I'm sure you'll find the car in time. The time, Lieutenant, is tomorrow noon in the motor pool. And if there is so much as one teensy-weensy scratch on that car, heads will roll. He heads will roll. Especially redheads. Do you read me, Lieutenant? Oh, yes, sir, I read you loud and shrill. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, Botsy, thanks for getting the fellas to rally round. You really think you could get Adrian's staff job to look like a town car instead of the town dump? No strain, no pain, Skipper. I couldn't scrounge a crane to get it down, though, so we're going to have to fix it right there in the tree. We're all swingers. Bless you, one and all. And you're invited to a luau tonight at Cuddler's Cove. With authentic Kula-type dancing girls. Three. Count them. One, two, three. <laughs> Down. If Adrian gets even a whisper of this, we're going to have to turn in our grass skirts. <laughs> okay, we're shoving off. Just keep the commander off our backs while we finish the job. Oh, don't worry about Big Brother. He'll be so busy watching the motor pool, you'll have time for coffee breaks. <laughs> Shove off. Bye. Thanks for bailing me out, Skipper. Uh, you're not out yet. Adrian's not going to take this lying down. I've got an Irish hunch. She's up to something. Boy, I'd sure like to know what's going on in that beady little brain of his. Gee, I wish I was psychotic. Then I could read his mind. <laughs> well, I could. <laughs> Be still my quivering taste buds. Tell me, maestro, what has the poet laureate of the skillet prepared for my breakfast this morning, eh? I just cook them, Chubbo. I don't explain them. <laughs> 
What a glorious sight. Eggs Benedict, rampant on a field of golden sauce. <laughs> now, don't tell me, Stanley, don't tell me. Let me guess. Mm, is there a whisper of rosemary there or just a snippet of thyme in that heavenly hollandaise, eh? Holiday peasant, don't you know holidays as for slob? What? If you can't recognize sauce, Stanley, when you smell it, eating a mess. Oh, please, Stanley, 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 I'm sorry, forgive me. I, I, my sinus must have been acting up again. Please? Pretty please with oregano on it? Well, okay, go ahead, wolf it down. But I think you should know this is your last meal prepared by the master hands of Chef Stanley Stubbs. Oh? Now I'm transferring off this anthill to combat duty. <laughs> Did you say combat? Watch it, Stubbs. We don't use that kind of language in our commander's presence. Why don't you cool it, clown? Who asked you to lip in? Oh, please, maestro. Why combat? Won't you reconsider? You're not even the standard size target. You know, they also serve who only stand and serve Eggs Benedict. You've got some nerve running off to war and leaving our commander to sweat it out on K-rations. <laughs> Utterly destroy me? Is it enough that some heartless saboteur has stolen my new staff car? No kidding. Somebody put the grab on your wheels? Yes, yes. But don't worry. That's not your problem. I'll get it back. I'm concerned with my little chef. You know, Stanley, I think you need a change. Why don't you pop off to Brisbane for a couple of days vacation? Okay. You know something? You got a heart that's almost as big as your stomach, fatso. <laughs> Are you going to stand still and let that little squirt insult Quiet, you like Beasley, that? Beasley, Beasley! That is not an insult. From him, that is just temperament. <laughs> well, now get on with your part, Beasley. Well, all is quiet at the motor pool, mm -hmm. sir, but there is no sign of the plotsome. I, I mean, the sad car. Somebody must have seen it. Why don't you just nose around and ask questions? Well, sir, I have done that, but nobody will think. Oh, gosh. But, but, sir, it does occur to me yes. that if you would offer a, a two weeks vacation in Brisbane for somebody who found the car... Of all the half-baked ideas, Beasley, that we... Uh... You know, it just occurs to me that sometimes a bit of my genius is rubbing off on you, Beasley. It <laughs> might just... Work. I positively guarantee it, sir. <laughs> reward? Adrian's offering a reward? I, I thought it my duty, Lieutenant, to warn you, in spite of what this woman has done to my boyish heart. <laughs> Sweet guy, Stanley, it gives me a lump in my throat. No, I am the one with the lump in the throat, but I'm trying to swallow my pride. You know, Adrian's gonna comb this island like a toupee. I've just gotta think of some way to stall him to give Boxy time to finish the repair job. Oh, man, wait till old fat grass finds out his town car is now instant junk. He's not gonna find out if I can help it. Listen, you two, stand by for Operation Decoy. Operation D what? Oh, oh, never mind, Stanley. I'll explain it on the way to the paint shop. Come on! <laughs> Well, I am proud of you, my boy. This is what I call action. It was nothing, sir. I just used the old Aristotelian method of logic. If I were a staff car, where would I go? A <laughs> car, all right. So I went and looked. Is there any scratches on it? Of course, that, that, that two weeks uh, liberty in Brisbane was an incentive, sir. That was expense paid, wasn't it? Beasley, has my car been damaged? Uh, well, sir, that is one way of putting it. The other is to call it just plain old... <laughs>
backwards. And nobody is driving. Well, I, 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 listen, I'm sure it's a trick, sir. Your staff... All captain. units, all units, all units. This is your commander. Scramble, scramble! <laughs> You see the time car go by? Oh, you must be kidding. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Sailor Adrian's called in reinforcements. Well, he needs them. I don't. And the camouflage. Oh. Green Hornet to Honeycomb. Uh, come in, Green Hornet. Situation under control, Skipper, but I don't know how long we can keep it up. We're running out of violence. <laughs> Okay, Green Hornet, proceed to Area X and find out how much longer Boxy needs. Over and out. Papa Bear to Honeycomb. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. I, uh, I didn't hear you. But I heard you, Lieutenant, every treacherous little word. Sir, how can you say that when my whole wave unit is out combing this island for your staff car? That's the gratitude we get. Oh, I'm grateful, Lieutenant. Area X is the only place we haven't looked. Shall we tootle over there? Together? <laughs> yeah, yes, sir, this is the spot. Area X, right, Lieutenant? Affirmative, sir, but as you can see, there's no town car here. <laughs> oh, no? Oh, no? Well, just look. Look up in that tree. <laughs> Beasley, you really must be a metal case for your information. Town cars do not grow on trees. <laughs> do grow on trees. <laughs> well, I'll be shoving off now. You'll be shoving off? Stanley, but why? Have I done something to offend you? Stanley, what is it you want? Just, just name it. Two weeks liberty in Brisbane, like you promised. Of course, I'll have Beasley take care of that right away. Oh, I didn't know Junior would come out of shock already. You're quite right. I'll do it myself, Stanley. Lieutenant Morgan and a machinist mate Kowalski reporting as ordered, sir. Ah, at ease, ladies, at ease. Now, I may be a disciplinarian, but I am nothing if not a man of my word. Technically, Kowalski found my car, so she's entitled to the reward. Two weeks in Brisbane. Dreamboat, think of it. We'll have liberty together. Two whole weeks of fun and games in kangaroo land. <laughs> Great. I'll be the only sailor to win a battle star on a Liberty Pass. <laughs> Sir, I, uh, I must say you are a big man. Uh, thank you. Uh, Lieutenant, you know, I could be persuaded to give you some time off, too. Oh, well, anything I can do deserve it, kind sir. Yes, would you tell me, how in the devil did my car get up in that tree without so much as a scratch on it? Oh, that's easy, sir. You'll have the answer to that as soon as you figure out how it got up there in the first place. <laughs> Bye. Well, thank you, Lieutenant. 